Uncle Melvin, we can go home now. We've had the sermon and music, and we have been blessed, um, as Pastor John and Pastor Mark said, by your music ministry. Thank you so much. So proud, uh, a proud niece, and we have been equally blessed, Gwen, by your ministry and the impact that you have had here with our women. So thank you once again. I also want to thank all the participants in the program today. Thank you, Praise First, for that lively worship. And today we are just going to preach the word. I was uh, been gone, been gone. I've missed my family. I missed my immediate family, but I've also missed my church family. I don't like to be away from my family. Um, been gone for 10 days. I was in Riverside, California. Um, I was taking some classes there. And I will have to say it was quite the mountaintop experience. I, I saw God there in my teachers and in my colleagues. And it was just a special time for me to be able to be there. Um, I also had the privilege last Sabbath to be in a different church, and we were able to go to a friend of mine, and I were able to go to Mount Rubido, which is Beverly's old church, and guess what? We didn't get out until 2 o'clock. <laughs> so if today we don't get out until a quarter till, you guys will be okay. If you need to go and get something to eat and bring it back or stay out there in the foyer until you're finished getting a little, a little energy there, that's okay too. But today we are going to have a continuation of our sermon series. Um, we, Pastor John spoke last week. For those of you that were here, what did he talk about? The importance of? They were listening the importance of prayer. And today, we are going to talk about what? Preaching the word. Amen. Will you bow your heads with me? Father in heaven, we are so grateful that we have the opportunity to be in your house of worship. I ask, Father, that you would speak this morning to all of us and that you would empower us to preach the word. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to play a little camelback trivia this morning. Ask one question. How many ministers do we have here at Camelback? Some people are saying three, some people are saying four. Oh, oh, yes, yes. We have, I don't know, how many members do we have, John, on the books? 1,041. I don't see 1,041 here, but whoever is here is a minister of Camelback Seventh-day Adventist Church working for the honor and glory of our Lord and Savior. So I want you to look at the person not next to you because you already know them. I want you to look at the person in front of you and behind you and point to them and tell them you are a minister. That's right. Now that we have that settled, we understand that we all have been called to minister and to ministry. Ministry um, in Greek is diakonos. There's another word. Diakonos is, um, in Spanish, is deacon. And that means minister or servant. So we are all servants of the Most High. 
We all have been charged with the gospel commission because we are all disciples. We all know the gospel commission, Matthew 28, 19, if you wouldn't mind repeating it with me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the and of the and of the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if we are all ministers and we've all received the gospel commission, can we conclude that we've all been called to preach? This may look differently for everyone. God is calling us to preach in different ways. And so some of us may be called to preach at work. Some of us may be called to preach at home. Some of us may be called to preach with our neighbors. Some of us are even called to preach right here to our very own members. 2 Timothy 4, 2 says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Not only have we been all called to preach the word, it says that we must be what? We must be prepared. That's right, we must be prepared. And the verse is also telling us that we pretty much have to be prepared year round, in and out of season. Now, the verse is also telling us that we have to preach the word. And this morning, we're going to discover that we are called to preach the word in three ways. Are you guys ready? All right, take notes. We are called to preach the word. We are called to preach the word. And we are called to preach the word. You got that? We are called to preach in three ways. Can you say it with me? We are called to preach the word. We are called to preach the word. And we are called to preach the word. Absolutely. Well, the first way we are called to preach the word is through scripture through God's holy book. Now let's get the obvious out of the way. Preaching the word through scripture. When we think of preaching the word, that's normally what we think of. Preaching the word through his word, through his Bible. Now, preaching the word can be and should be even though it's very difficult for me to preach the word, but it can be and should be as natural as explaining to someone how to add one plus one. What is one plus one? Two. How do you know that? You learned it. You studied that. And as you progressed from, from addition to subtraction, you went on to multiplication. What's nine times seven? 63. How do you know that? Were you born knowing that? You studied it. You learned that in school. The more you study God's word, the easier it will become for you to preach his word in all seasons. That's why our text says, be prepared. You can't just preach the word if you don't know the word. Now we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna connect with God's word in a different kind of way. I would like for you all, can you go to the next slide please? Um, and just go all of, Go down, yep, yep, yep. How many of you agree that secondhand smoke is really bad for you? Yes. Well, 
I was in class this week and I learned the most amazing and creative ways. One of my classes was on preaching and I learned some of the most amazing ways as to how we can really connect with God's word. And the more we connect with God's word, the more we make God's word something personal in our own lives, the more opportunity and the more prepared we are going to be to preach his word. So first and foremost, when you're preparing to preach the word, you really have to connect with God's word on a personal level. So we're gonna do something here. It's going to be a little bit different today. It's going to be a little bit more interactive, but we are going to look up a text, and I don't want you to look it up yet. I'll give you the text. But as you look up the text, I'm going to give everyone just a few minutes to look up that text, and really, as you're reading it, ask the following questions. First, you're going to put yourself in the story because in order to really connect with God's word, you have to relate to it. You've got to use your imagination. So pretend you are actually in the story or in that text and ask yourself questions like, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What's going on in the story? Now, if we had time, this is something that I'm helping you guys prepare for in your own personal devotions every morning or every evening or both. Um, this is supposed to do, be done with a, you know, a good amount of time. So in the first question, you're also going to be asking where the story was. You're gonna take out your map. You're gonna get out your Bible um, concordance and you're gonna ask all kinds of questions to really get the details of the story. We don't have that kind of time this morning and that's okay. Another question you're going to ask is, I wonder why. I wonder why the woman um, that poured perfume at Jesus' feet used her hair. Just ask questions. Get, be inquisitive about the scriptures. And then you're going to make it a little bit more personal. You're going to sit there and meditate and pray and ask God, God, I know this is a story in the Bible, but what are you trying to tell me in this story or in this text? So then it becomes personal. And when you feel that God is trying to tell you something in this text, you want to respond. I encourage you to respond. So you, in turn, are going to have a response for what God is telling you in this text. Did you guys get it? Did I explain it okay? All right, so our text is going to be Matthew 18. I'm sorry, it's not Matthew 18. Give me a second. Our text is going to be Give me a second here. Thank you, I'm looking for that, I thought it was. Thank you so much. Who said four? Thank you. Is it in my notes? Matthew, it's Matthew 4, 18 through 22. It's the story of the four fishermen called as disciples. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 and 22. If you can read, even if you are a child, I want everyone to look this up. Now I want you to spend a few minutes just reading this text by yourself in silence and asking yourself these questions. And then we're going to break out into groups of four, and each of you is going to take one minute to answer one of the four questions. So each of you will be, re be assigned to one of the four questions. But right now, let's just take a few minutes to read the verses 
in the context of these questions, and then I'll say time, and we'll get together in groups of four, and we will discuss the questions. So let's do that now. We'll take one more minute. Okay, usually if you're doing this as a devotional, it takes some time to really unravel. You wanna keep a journal, a diary, or maybe type it on a computer. If you're like me, sometimes I like to type certain things that I'm learning about the Bible, but just it helps with the flow a little bit more, and you're gonna need time to do this. Today we don't have a lot of time to develop it, but we just wanna make sure you get the picture. So now we are going to divide into groups of four, and you each are going to be assigned to one question and answer it. So let's do that now.
We'll take one more minute to wrap it up. I see, I see the juice is flowing. I know you don't want to stop, but we're going to wrap it up in one minute. Can I have four volunteers to come up to answer one of the four questions? You have to be prepared to answer any one of the questions. Can I have one, four people to come up? We just need two more. Very good. All right, so. How did it feel? Congratulations, you guys preached, just preached your first sermon <laughs> to each other. Um, just want to take, if you guys wouldn't mind, um, just maybe a few seconds to go. We'll do one, question two, question three, and question four. Okay, and if you wouldn't mind just taking a few seconds each to explain. I'm in the... Uh the uh, group of those that follow Jesus and we are coming into the lake and in the lake you can smell the lake you can the it's kind of a distinctive smell there and in, in the lapping of the waves that are along the lake shore and so I've been following Jesus for a number of days I've been watching him and he's been interacting with with some of these people and so it's not a surprise to me that he goes to to the boat the fishing boat of Peter and John it's not a, a Peter and Andrew and not a surprise to me that he goes to the their, I mean they're fit they're good friends Peter and 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 Peter and Andrew and James and John are all friends together and so it doesn't surprise me that Jesus comes in approaches them. Very good. Thank you. I like the description. I, I would say, I wonder why you want me to follow you. What's in it for me? Why I'm minding my own business. So you want me to follow you? Explain why I need to follow you and what am I going to get out of this? Very good. Thank you. Um, we were talking about why God is trying to tell me. Um, when we understand fishermen, it takes time. There's a lot of fishes in the sea, but there's that one fish that that fisherman is waiting and going slowly and taking his time. It could take all day, but he catches that one fish. And when he catches that fish, he's so overjoyed. And that is what God is trying to tell me. Take your time. Mm. Don't be in a rush. Mm. I have the person that I want you to serve and to do and spread the gospel. Amen. What do you want to say to God in response to what you thought he was trying to tell you in the passage? Really, God? You want me? Really? That would be my response because it would be an overwhelming wow. for you to pick me. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. John, I think we have, as you can see, more than three preachers here in this church. Preach the word. I would highly recommend that in preparation to preach the word in and out of season, that you, when you are preparing, that you really are well prepared. And that takes time. And as the scripture says, that takes patience. There's another way in which we preach the word because John 1, 14 tells me that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father, full of grace and truth. Who is that word? That word is Jesus. He is the word in the flesh. 
And so when we are preaching, we must preach what Jesus has done for us. Because it's one thing to know the scriptures, even the devil believes information, but there's another thing of knowing your personal savior. So we are called to teach information. We are called to teach the, the truths of the scripture. And the truth of that scripture is transfer, transformational. But we're also called to tell and to share what God has done. So we have something that is of the mind, but we also are sharing something of the heart. Nobody can dispute your experience with Jesus. So at this time, I want you to stand up and I want you to find someone you've never spoken to before and I want you to take a minute each and share what Jesus has done for you. It could be recently, it could be years, years ago. What has Jesus done for you? We're gonna preach the word today. So stand up and get with someone you've never spoken to before. I know that we could be here all day and tell of the wonders that God has done for us, but I know that some of us are already hungry, so we're going to have to come back to our seats. Thank you so much for sharing. I've asked my good friend here, Sure Guy, if he would share what Jesus has done for him with the rest of you. Hello, church. So for you who really don't know me, uh, I'm from Africa, but to be specific, I'm from Rwanda. Uh, some of you know the story of what happened in my country and other doesn't really know. Uh, in my country in 1994, there was a war and a lot of people died. So to see me, even in this country, there, is, there was like many years I've been just trying, just to run, just to survive. So with running without Jesus, what? There's no place to go without Jesus. So Jesus has been with me through the way until the present, where I just sit in the church and enjoy and praise him for what he's been doing in my life. Amen. So you're saying, yes, 
Thank you so much, your guy. You're saying that Jesus literally spared your life during war. That is amazing. All of us have a story and a different and unique story to tell. And thank you so much for sharing that story. Thank you for preaching the word this morning. We have one more way in which we could preach the word. And that is with your life. It does not require words. You all have heard the quote before, preach at all times and if necessary, use words. There's another saying, may your life preach more loudly than your lips. One of my daughters the other day um, was talking with some people that it was very apparent and clear that their lifestyle was much different from ours. And as she was talking with them, they were just sharing with each other and she showed such respect and kindness that they were shocked when they heard that she was Christian. And she said, you know, it saddened me because they were shocked that I was treating them kindly because I knew that our lifestyles were different and I was still willing to show love. And they said, how can you be Christian? And so my daughter went on to explain to them that Christians believe in loving everyone. And they also overheard that her parents were pastors. And they asked, you mean even your parents that are pastors love everyone? Yes, yes. It's unfortunate that there are people in this world that are giving Christianity a really bad name to the point where people who are non-believers don't associate Christians with love. And so I want to encourage us to represent well, in and out of season. What does in and out of season mean? It means all the time. I also want to encourage us. Some people don't have a problem representing outside, in public, in front. I want to encourage us to preach the word in our own homes. Sometimes that's more difficult than preaching the word with our lives out in the community. And so I just, my prayer is that we can all preach the word with our lives in and out of season when no one's looking, when there are people around. Let's be an example. Now, some of you are asking, this is too much. You're asking us to preach. You're asking us to preach. You're asking us to preach. This is way too much. It's overwhelming. I'm not perfect. I wasn't born with the gift of gab, et cetera, et cetera. All you need to do when setting an example is connect with Christ and he will show you how. Amen. When you're preaching the word, all you have to do is be transparent because if you, as I look around in this room, as beautiful and as kind-hearted as you all are, nobody is perfect here. And so, yes, sometimes we're going to not set the right example sometimes, but that means that we're transparent enough to say, oops, I'm sorry, I messed up. Oops, I'm struggling with this. Transparency is a part of setting that example. It's letting others know that we all make mistakes and we all forgive and we're all forgiven. There's one more thing I need you to know. That God has prepared a way 
for us to be successful in preaching his word. In preaching his word, in preaching his word, and preaching his word. He sent us help, and that help is the Holy Spirit. So you are not to do this alone. John 15, 26 to 27 says, I will send you the helper from the Father. The helper is the spirit of truth who comes from the Father. When he comes, he will tell about me and you will tell people about me too because you have been with me from the beginning. John 14, 26 says, but the advocate, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So as you are digging deeper into God's word and as you are walking with Christ on a daily basis, when you come in contact with people because you are connected to the true source, of love, of holiness, and of goodness, the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. The Holy Spirit will remind you of the things that you have learned. And I can testify to that because every single time that I have to stand before you guys, I tremble. Every single time that I have been asked to preach the word, my mind goes blank. Every single time I am called to preach the word on a Sabbath morning before you guys, it is a miracle of the Holy Spirit. And God wants to do that in each and every one of you. All of you, no matter what your age, have been called to preach the word. I like to invite you guys to um, read with me the last text, which has been our text for today, but I want us to read it together and I want us to say it with conviction. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, preach the, oh no, 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 we're not ready. Preachers, remember, we're all preachers, are you ready? Let's try it again. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience and careful instruction. I want to thank you guys for preaching the word with me this morning. Now, as we close, you know, we always like to give opportunity for people to make a decision. And so, some of you may have gotten excited about this preach the word. And I know that God is gonna use you in different ways. But this is a special calling for those of you who would like to preach the word by helping other people learn about God through Bible studies. So if you have been wrestling or thinking about, I wonder how I could share God with others, we'd like to give you the opportunity this morning. If you would like to give Bible studies, even if you've never done it before, we can help you, we can train you. But this call, this special call, is for those who are interested in helping this church reach others for Christ through Bible studies. So if that is something that you would like to do, I'd like to call you up now. Come. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Remember, you don't have to be an expert. All you have to do is have a willing heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Is there anybody else that feels compelled to preach the word? Anyone else? Amen. Now, I'm going to ask all of my Preach the Word people through Bible studies to stand here.
Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Thank you. We have one of our young people. Amen. KJ. Is there anybody else? Well, this side is our preach the word through Bible study side, okay? So if anybody else feels compelled to do that, we're still going to give you time to do that. This side over here is for those of you who want to receive more studies. We have people here who are saying that they're willing and ready. So I want to ask if there's somebody here who'd like to learn more about God's word so that they can be empowered to preach the word, I'd like to ask that you come up and you stand here. It doesn't matter what your age is. It doesn't matter where you are in life. We just want to give you that opportunity to learn more about God and his love and his goodness. Amen. Thank you. God's love and his spirit touches and reaches all ages. Thank you. Is there anybody else that is willing and wants to learn more about God through Bible studies? We have lots of workers. Well, this next invitation is for any of you who would like to ask God to help you on a daily basis to preach the word. If that is your desire, to have God to help you through his word or through Jesus, in Jesus, and through our example. If you would like him to help you and give you that power, would you please stand with me now? I want to thank you so much for your patience. All of us are going to have hearty appetites. And thank you for preaching the word with us this morning. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're here, your people. We don't know anything, Father, but we know that you can give us the power and the strength to preach the word in your name. And Father, we're asking for your spirit to show us and to guide us every step of the way. We have willing hearts. But sometimes we're afraid. We don't know who to talk to. We don't know how to talk to them. We don't know what to say. But Father, we just want you to know that we're willing. And I ask, Lord, that you would help us to spend time in your word so that we can be ready in all seasons. Help us to connect with Jesus. He is the truth and the way and the life. Help us to love him more and more each day and appreciate what he's done on the cross for us. We thank you for spending time with us this morning. And please continue to walk with us during the week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So have a wonderful day. Happy Sabbath. He's going to have you back.